the year following the murder of transgender adolescent Brianna Gee, has been described by her family as beyond our worst nightmares. In a statement released yesterday night, Scarlett Junkinson's family said that they agreed with the jury's finding, the judge's sentence and the decision to name the offenders, and added, they are deeply sorry for her horrible acts. Along with co-conspirator Eddie Ratcliffe, Jenkinson was identified and given a life sentence for the February 2023 murder of the 16-year-old in a Warrington Park. The killers were 15 years old at the time. Jenkinson's family stated that although they were in turmoil, their first priority was to ensure that they didn't go against Brianna's family's desires. In a statement that said, we offer our sincere thanks to Esther Gee for her incredible selflessness and empathy towards our family. They also acknowledged Brianna Gee's mother. Her generosity is great, and we will always be appreciative. We sincerely apologize to Brianna's family, friends, our community, and everyone else who has been impacted by this tragedy. A court had previously heard that Scarlett Jenkinson claimed to be excited when she fatally stabbed youngster Brianna Gee and that she wanted to save a portion of her flesh as a souvenir. Prosecutor Deanna Heer Casey stated that Jenkinson killed Brianna because he believed she would leave and wanted a piece of her body to always be with her. She also said that she had attempted to use medications to poison her victim in a previous incident where Brianna got sick. In an additional account of events given to a probation officer, Mrs. Heer reported that Jenkinson claimed that she and Eddie Radcliffe had purposefully drawn Brianna to the park. Mrs. Heer went on, on this particular occasion, she claimed that she had stabbed the victim three times, after forcing her to the ground and giving Eddie the knife. At that point, she took the knife and administered the majority of the stab wounds. After being expelled from another comprehensive for attempting to poison a fellow student with cannabis candies, Jenkinson was transferred to Brianna Gee's school. Prior to being taken into custody on February 12, Junkinson appeared to be a typical adolescent female. She had killed Brianna, the 15-year-old who was born to hard-working parents a tradesman, father, and an educator mother was perceived by neighbors as quiet and a little nervous. Beneath the exterior, however, were obsessions with torture and murder, sinister dreams, and in-depth knowledge of serial killers information that Jenkinson would eventually use to compile her own kill list of other kids and plan Brianna's demise. By the time the adolescent enrolled at Warrington, Cheshire's Birchwood Community High, she had already been expelled from several schools. Additionally, it has come to light that Jenkinson, who goes by Girl X, was most recently expelled for trying to poison a fellow student by giving them cannabis, gummies, which resulted in their illness. Jenkinson convinced the girl to eat two of the candies in the Colchith High School library, not realizing they were laced with marijuana. After the attack in October 2022, the student got quite ill and required medical attention. After being expelled, the youngster relocated to the neighboring Birchwood High School, where she met Brianna in the Inclusion Unit, a classroom dedicated to teaching challenging and vulnerable students apart from the regular curriculum. Because of her anxiety issues, Brianna was admitted to the unit, and Jenkinson was removed due to her behavior. When Jenkinson was taken into custody, I assumed there must have been an error. She never caused any problems. One neighbor remarked, I never so much as saw her drop a piece of litter. It is alleged that Jenkinson's behavior was more widespread than Brianna's school knew, that a youngster was not aware of what they were taking, that she got sick, and that the police were contacted. If anything came up where we thought that it would be a danger in any way, then you can simply refuse, head teacher Emma Mills stated. Regarding the facts we were given about Scarlett, nothing stood out as concerning. A culture high student's father remarked that his daughter was fortunate to be alive when she turned down Jenkinson's drug-infused candies. There was a significant incident at the high school, and Scarlett Jenkinson was expelled, he stated. The murder trial has been horrifying to listen to. I believed I was exaggerating when she tried to poison my daughter because I never thought a 15-year-old would want to kill another youngster. She attempted to give my daughter to cannabis gummies, 
but one of the other girls in the library took them instead of her. She was admitted to A&E. According to a former student, Jenkinson would arrive at class, smelling of weed, with red eyes, and high on, substances and stuff. Jenkinson enticed Brianna to the park with the false impression that they would share a cocaine high, according to evidence presented to the jury during the trial. In addition to calling Jenkinson manipulative, the parents said that Jenkinson has a history of bullying other kids. He added that she called in sick as well so she could watch scary movies at home. The father remarked, every parent in this village feels like their kids have had a lucky escape. She was a manipulator and a bully. She always got someone else to perform the nasty work. She wouldn't get her hands filthy herself. We assumed Scarlett was telling Eddie to stab her when we heard. It was only the two of them. It's been awful. The worst nightmare of any parent. My daughter could have been one of the children on their murder list, which is why I'm so grateful she's still here. My heart aches for Brianna's family, but I'm so happy my kid is safe. According to a source, Jenkinson didn't have many close friends at school, where she confided in her peers that she practiced Satanism and thought she was a witch. Despite her academic struggles, she remained unreported to the authorities and gave the impression of being a typical teenage girl from a well-to-do household. Although no one gave much credence to Jenkinson's allegations, her classmates were well aware of her violent tendencies even though the local community was not. It was general knowledge from 2020 that she had a kill list of kids she wanted to kill, stated the father of a student at the school. When my daughter got home, she informed me about it, but nobody seemed to be concerned. When Girl X attempted to enlist other kids to participate in blood rituals with her, everyone simply dismissed her as strange and idealistic. Not a single student will tell you they liked her. In her testimony, Jenkinson said that she was an anxious person who had self-harmed as a coping mechanism when she was 12 years old. She also accused Eddie Ratcliffe, formerly known as Boy Y, of killing Brianna. She had a history of being interested in violent films. She told Ratcliffe that Sweeney Todd was her favorite and that she had seen it 9,000 times. The 15-year-old also stated that he had previously killed two people although there is no proof to support this claim. The night before he killed Brianna, Jenkinson had even seen the film and had told Ratcliffe he kills people with one of the sharpest blades in the world. She said that she started having murderous fantasies when she was 14 years old. She then claimed to have developed an interest in dark materials such as serial killers, murder, and torture films that she discovered on the dark web using a downloaded app she emailed Ratcliffe an advertisement in December for an underground website catering to those who enjoy rape, torture, and murder. She said to him, I adore watching torture videos on the dark web, the real ones. The Milwaukee monster Jeffrey Dahmer, the cannibal and necrophile who murdered and dismembered 17 men between 1978 and 1991, Night Stalker Richard Ramirez, whose 13 victims included a 9-year-old girl and a 79-year-old woman, and Dr. Death Harold Shipman, the English general practitioner suspected of killing about 250 people, all captured Jenkinson's fascination. She said, I could talk about him for like two hours, including quotes and dates of stuff, to Ratcliffe when they were discussing Ramirez. Jenkinson took thorough notes about different murders, including quotes, the number of people they killed, and the techniques they employed to mutilate them, according to pages from her notebook that were made public by the police on Friday. Experts explained how Jenkinson's exposure to horrifying violence on the internet would have desensitized her to it. The internet leads to a lot of criminal activities because it's perceived as fantasy, stated Professor Alan Woodward, a cybersecurity and computer science expert from Surrey University. Users are encouraged to do it themselves in addition to becoming desensitized. They carry out a furious attack and don't consider the ramifications because they are still living in that online virtual world. They see other people doing it, or they might do something softer or illegal, online, and no one comes knocking at their door. He informed the podcast The Trial, 
that Jenkinson could not have stumbled upon these websites rather, after displaying interest online, social media algorithms would have pushed him in their direction. Six months prior to Brianna's murder, she had downloaded a program known as a Onion Browser, which enabled her to view and access films of people being tortured and murdered on the dark web sometimes even live without anybody knowing. For months, she and Ratcliffe had been talking about killing someone, and Jenkinson had compiled a list of possible victims that included the names of at least five kids, including Brianna. They discussed killing Boy M, who isn't identified for legal reasons. In October 2022, Jenkinson asked, Can I keep some things, a couple of teeth, and an eye? In communications shown to the court. You know that girl I mentioned, Brianna, I'm still trying to sick kill her, and the easiest way, is pill overdose. She said on January 23rd, claiming to have attempted to kill Brianna by poisoning her with pills. People are aware of her depression and bad behavior, so they wouldn't be suspicious of her. However, she seems to have a high threshold for pain I gave her some today, that should have killed her. Jenkinson then got to work creating a detailed plan with Ratcliffe's assistance and, most importantly, his hunting knife on how to murder Brianna. After her arrest, police discovered a handwritten note in her bedroom that said, meet Eddie at wooden posts at 1pm, stroll to the library and bus station. We all three waited for Brianna to get off the bus before walking, to Linear Park. Proceed to the tunnel pipe area. I give Eddie a code phrase. While I stab her in the stomach, he stabs her in the back. Boy Y pulls the body into the vicinity. Together, we cover the space with logs, EDC. As per the judge's ruling, Ratcliffe was partly driven by animosity towards Brianna due to her gender identity, whereas Jenkinson was driven by her intense need to murder. He spoke in a way that was perceived as dehumanizing calling her it on multiple occasions and guessing about whether she would scream like a man or a girl. He sent Jenkinson a message stating that he wanted to know what size D it had and that was why he intended to kill Brianna. Mrs. Justice Weir stated that she believed both killers had some transphobic inclinations because they were aware of each other's intentions. In the past, requests for Cheshire police to look into Brianna's death as a hate crime against her because of her gender identification, were turned down. When approached following the completion of sentencing, the police declined to comment on the situation. Following the sentencing, senior Crown Prosecutor Nicola W.I.N. Williams stated, outside, Manchester, Crown Court, that Brianna's murder, is classified, as a hate crime. According to her, the CPS requested an extension of the murderer's sentences from the judge, citing their belief that the murder was a hate crime partly inspired by animosity towards Brianna because, to her gender identity. We are happy that the court has determined that this served as a motivation, she continued. Professor of Criminology at Birmingham City University, and former prison governor David Wilson, who oversaw specialized units for some of the most infamous serial killers in Britain, thinks that sending graphic messages on WhatsApp and Snapchat to Brianna B. helped expedite their plan to kill her. Brianna B. was killed a few weeks after the two identified her as their victim. According to Professor Wilson, Brianna's murder went from an imagined fantasy to reality within what seems like a breath. He goes on to say that Jenkinson and Ratcliffe's relationship was a quintessential folly do, which is French for shared madness or delusion, and is commonly associated with murderous relationships. The fact that Jenkinson and Radcliffe were not boyfriend and girlfriend is less common. Additionally, unlike other well-known British murderous couples, such Ian Brady and Myra Hindley, and Rose, and Fred West, Jenkinson was the dominant partner in their relationship. Professor Wilson stated, there is always a dominant, someone who is in charge, and a subservient within every fully do. Jenkinson appeared to be the one in control in this instance. This is intriguing because it is uncommon for the woman to be the more dominating one in a fully do. Through her confession, Jenkinson revealed that she had stabbed Brianna as well. Previously, she had denied any involvement and blamed Ratcliffe. However, by revealing this information, I believe we are starting to understand the dynamics of their power, dynamic, and how peculiarly it 
is the woman who is leading this particular fully, a do.